This is a supplemental video that goes through the process of immediate hypersensitivity or anaphylaxis, presented by Rachel Shutter, Madison Kwiatkowski, and Liz Getty. Anaphylaxis is the immediate hypersensitivity to an allergen. Immediate hypersensitivity is when the reaction takes place within minutes or a maximum of a few hours after exposure. Some common irritants are peanuts, shellfish, and insect stings. The extreme effects of anaphylaxis are shown in the images to the left and will be discussed later in this presentation. This condition can be lethal if not treated immediately. In order to understand anaphylaxis, we need to recall immune response cells such as B cells and T cells. Also recall the different classes of antibodies and their structures as well as their ability to signal for the release of inflammatory agents such as histamine. If need be, review the major anatomical structures of the respiratory system to have a better understanding of anaphylaxis. The first time exposed to an allergen, the body is going to produce IgE antibodies. The next time the individual is exposed to the allergen, the allergen crosses with the IgE antibodies and causes degranulation of the mast cell or basophil. This signals an allergic response. In the graphic on the bottom of the screen, you can see on the left that there is not a trigger for an allergic response as the cell simply becomes sensitized to an allergen, whereas on the right, the cell is not only recognizing the allergen, but when it binds to the antibody, it triggers an allergic response in the release of, inflam of an inflammatory stimulus. Antigen-presenting cells recognize foreign materials such as allergens. These cells then engulf these allergens and then it is processed by the cell and presented on the exterior. The presentation of these allergens to the helper T cells is the next step and what can either lead to a learned behavior for immune cells or the stimulus can go to trigger an immune response. Examples of antigen-presenting cells are macrophages, dendritic cells, and B lymphocytes. Once the allergen is presented to the helper T cells, it can trigger two different responses depending on if it's the primary or secondary exposure. In the first exposure, it will trigger memory T cells, which speed up the immune response and future reactions and subsequent exposures to the specific allergen. In the secondary response, memory T cells are also produced. However, an allergic response is triggered when previously created memory T cells recognize the foreign allergen. At this point, the T cells signal for activation of other leukocytes. One of the leukocytes activated by helper T cells in an anaphylactic reaction are B cells. B cells are an antigen-specific cell that takes in the allergen and signals for the creation of IgE antibodies. IgEs are created by plasma cells and are the key antibody in anaphylaxis. The image on the bottom left shows the B cell surface with antigens that are specific to a certain class of antibodies. IgE antibodies signaled by B cells are then released into the bloodstream. Once in the blood, they attach to various cells containing inflammatory agents. At this site is where the antigens attach to these antibodies and trigger the immediate hypersensitivity response known as anaphylaxis. The two types of cells that IgA antibodies affix themselves to are mast cells and basophils. Each of these cells contain granules of histamine. The significant difference between these two types of cells is their location. Mast cells are commonly found in and around tissues, where basophils are found in the blood vessels and circulatory system. An immediate hypersensitivity response is initiated when a sensitized IgE antibody binds to an allergen. When this binding occurs, more IgE antibodies are produced, which attach to mast cells and basophils. This action signals the degranulation or release of histamine in these cells. The degranulation of histamine, a potent vasodilator, produces the anaphylactic reaction. The chemical properties of histamine cause swelling of the respiratory tissues, which constricts the airway. Other manifestations include redness of skin, rash, and hives. These conditions need to be treated as quickly as possible with epinephrine, commonly administered through the use of an EpiPen.